Welcome to First Canada's FTC SIM tutorials. This series is about how to use FTC SIM, a First Tech Challenge robot simulator created by First Canada. And in fact, this is a revised video because uh, things have changed in the FTC SIM. If you watch the original one of these, uh, the first thing you'll notice that's changed is that we have our own domain, ftcsim.org. And you can go there to create a free account. There's a uh, video on how to do that. You can go there to create a teacher account. There's a video how to do that. So when you do that, you can set up your own class or your own team, input students, create passwords, and have it so that no student has to share any personal identifiable information. In any case, let's get on with today's video, which is about um, how to do the second of the FTC movement videos, puzzles, challenges, called Rearward. And we're going to take a look at that in just a second. But before we do, remember that in order to actually use this, you have to have uh, an account. And I mentioned how you would do that, but I haven't logged in. And you can see that because these things have locks on them. So I'm going to log in right now. I'm going to go up to this hamburger menu at the top. I'm going to choose to log in and I'm logging in with a, a teacher account that I have, um, but uh, you don't need one to do this. So I'm back here at the landing page and I'm going to go down here to FTC movement and you can see there's no longer the locks there. And under FTC movement, I'm going to choose the second one, which is rearward. And when I go in here, I'm going to close this video off because I'm making this new one that hopefully will eventually be there. Going to zoom in a little bit here and just to uh, point a couple things out so here on the right we have the field the border of the field um, is an actual ftc size which is 12 feet by 12 feet it's a narrower one here for doing this video this puzzle in the middle we have where we put our blocks at the top we have some choices we could actually change it to onbot java we could go and take a look at the guide and see that video again, perhaps if we wanted to, we can save what we're doing. And here on the far left is where we can get access to the various blocks that we're gonna put in to make our robot move and react to sensor input and so on. So if you remember from the previous one we did, one line uh, where we had the robot move forward, you might notice that this robot is actually backwards. So. As with many robot things, we can actually do two different things. There's more than one correct solution, is I guess what I should be saying. And we're going to take a quick look at the one that drives the robot backwards. But the real reason I want to do this video today is to mention about turning. So we're going to drive the robot backwards. So to drive the robot backwards, we're going to put dual in. And we're going to put the run blocks down there. And I'm going to change it to 0 0.5 and 0.5 because one of the changes that's been made is it's going to react more like a real robot and that if I turn if I turn them on and make it move it's going to when I try to stop it drift a little bit so I'm going to do that so anyways this will actually make it spin which we don't want we want it to go forward so if you remember we want it to go backwards we want it to go straight instead of spinning one of the ways that we can do that is to go to um, <clears throat> actuators DC motor and make one of the motors and it's the left one we want to make one of the motors go in reverse so I'm not going to explain this too much but essentially there's motors on these two wheels here that are point at the front now but normally they're at the back and uh, one of them is flipped over so what would be normally forward for it is actually reverse so we need to reverse that one so that it's going to go in the same direction as the other one so here we go and try it and we see it's going forward well we don't we don't really want that it's going the wrong way so one of the ways we can do that is put it in as negative 0.5 the maximum speed of a motor is point is one the maximum speed backwards is, is negative one so if we put in negative 0.5 it's going to turn the motors on and make them go forward which is go towards the flag unfortunately though uh, it keeps trying to move, and uh, even though the puzzle says it's solved, it's not solved to the best of the way that we can do it. It's got onto the touchpad, it's raised the flag, but unfortunately, we really should also stop the robot. So we're going to grab just like we did in the other one, 
the DC motor and the dual. We're going to drag it in after that motor turns on. And we're going to change the zeros, which is going to send zero power to it. And essentially, it's going to turn it off. But if you recall from the previous one, if we do that, it's going to do the command so quickly that it's going to turn the motors on and then it's going to turn them off. So we really need to put it in sleep. So again, if you watch the other video that I had put up here before, the sleep command didn't look the same as what you would do on the actual robot. So it's been adjusted to make it look more like that. So we'll turn it on, see how far it goes. Oh, it's almost there. So I'm going to put in like uh, 1300. Woo. If I could type 1300 and reset it and let's see if it gets us there and it does it's just touching but it works okay so that's one way to do it uh, and it works but what I want to do is I want to do it again but I want to do it so that um, it makes the robot turn around now I'm gonna undo that because I dragged it off and trashed it but there we go so what I'm going to do, since I don't want to drag and drop, and I want to keep this one, first of all, I'm going to save it, is I'm just going to right click on it and I'm going to duplicate it and put the copy over here. And then that one that I'm going to keep for later, because it works moving it backwards, I'm going to uh, disable it because I can only have one that's really active. So that's the one that's right here. So in this one, I am going to make some changes. I'm going to put down. 0.5 because I'm going to make it turn around and then it's going to go forward in 0.5 okay and I'm going to make it stop and I'm going to make it go for a certain amount of time and I'm going to take this one and I'm going to drag it off there put it off to the side for a second put this back in and now uh, I'm going to want it to spin so it spins okay well, it's not going to spin yet because I can't have that over there. It'll cause my program not to work. So I'm going to run it. It's going to spin. And I would like it to stop once it's spinning. It stop when it's facing there. So I'm going to have to change this. I'm going to put 500 and see if it'll stop. If half a second is good. Oh, that's so close. Maybe 450. Let's see if that will work. Okay, let's see if I can turn it around. Okay, that's close enough for me. And you can see if you, if you watch it, it started to drift a little bit. So it really, the motor's turned off before it actually was facing there. Now it's actually facing there. So that one will get me facing in the right direction. Again, we learned about this spinning thing. So what I have to do now, once I've got it facing the right direction, is I need to make it go forward and stop. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to actually, instead of going up here to actuators, and dual although that's exactly what i just did i'm going to right click on this one and duplicate it put it right after that i'm going to put in my negative fives so it's not going too fast negative five and of course i need to have my sleep i'm going to duplicate that and i'm going to put it in and i need to make it stop so i'm going to duplicate that one and i can put it in and let's see what happens so I turn it around. Oh, why does it keep turning around? Oh, because this motor, the left motor, to make it go forwards, has to be put in reverse. I was okay with it not being put in reverse up here because that allowed me to spin. But now I actually need to make sure that it's in reverse. So I'm going to drag it back in and I'm going to put it right here, which is I want it to be reversed before it goes. It starts up again. So here we go. Let's try and see what happens. Okay, oh, and you can see what happened is I actually, in this case, I need to make it, I'm going to put down a second. I'm going to, I need to make it, um, I need to make it stop. Oh, you know what? That's, I may need that one, but I actually need another sleep. I need to put a sleep in here after it stops so that it doesn't you doesn't swerve okay so if, if i don't put that in if i don't put the sleep in i can do one of two things i can put the sleep in and make sure that it's completely paused or i can change the speed so it's going much much slower when it spins but that'll affect how long i get it to spin in order that it doesn't sort of uh 
drift on me. But what I did notice is that this isn't going far enough, and I've learned from the last one that maybe it needs to go a little longer. Let's see, let's see how it goes. Oh, so close. I'm going to make it 1300. So change it and let's see if we can get it to go. And we can. So I'm going to recap. So I needed it to spin. I learned in the first program that I did that if I just turn the both motors on, I give them a positive value, it'll spin. But I didn't want it just to keep spinning. I needed it to stop, but I needed it to figure out it needed to spin for a certain amount of time so that the backward facing robot now faces forward. And so that's what this one, this one, and this one do. Then I needed it to pause so that it, the momentum was no longer there. And I could have slowed it down by changing these to a lesser value, like 0.2. But I decided I would just put the sleep block in and have it rest there to make sure that it was there. And you can try it in different ways when you actually use it on your robot. So now, when I want it to go forward, I need to make sure that one of these motors is reversed. It's the left one, as we've seen. So it was going to reverse. And then I'm going to have it move forward. I found out through trial and error that 1.3 seconds or 1300 milliseconds is enough. And then I'm going to stop it. And that's going to allow me to turn it around, stop once it's facing, and then go forward and get on the touchpad. And as you can see, I could have gone a little further instead of 1300 because I've got more of the touchpad to hit. Hopefully now you've learned how to make it go backwards. You've used those commands more than once now, the set power command, the sleep command, and another set power that stops it. And of course, our motor left direction where we set it to reverse. And then we've learned how to make it spin and stop when it's facing a certain direction. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you'll sign up for a ftcsim.org account. And if you do, send me an email, tell me how you're doing. If you have any questions, you can also email me at pkeenan at firstinspires.org. Hope to see you soon.